So here, I have a very interesting insight from Aristotle, which says, happiness is the meaning and the purpose of life. In fact, the whole aim and end of human existence is about gaining happiness. And if happiness has to come, very interestingly, it can also raise eyebrows. There was a situation in an office where a person was very happy. Then people would wonder why he was happy. And then he came up to Aristotle and then he said, Sir, you said that happiness is important and the purpose of life. But now people are questioning me why I am so happy. So it's a very interesting thing that even if you are happy, there is a problem. And even if you are not happy, there is a problem. All men by nature desire knowledge. People are looking at knowledge as a source of happiness. And in this quest, I can say that it is through knowledge that we can attain excellence and happiness. And a person who is dedicated to both excellence and happiness, that is excellence being we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. So here is Dr. Nanlal sir, the professor head department of pedodontics and preventive dentistry, who is from the JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research, JSS Dental College and Hospital, who has dedicated himself to the field of pedodontics. In fact, Dr. B. Nanlal sir, got his BDS way back in 1984 from Annamalai University and his master's degree in the specialty of pediatric and preventive dentistry in 1987 and 89 from Punjab University. His additional training in the year 1986 to 87, he completed the senior special trainee in Medical College Madras in the year 1985 and he also underwent a program in the educational and clinical training for the period July 2005 to 7 at the International Association for Orthodontics. In 2007 and 8, he completed his PG diploma in hospital management with SJCE Mysuru. Dr. Nandal has been awarded with a string of trophies and awards for outstanding achievements. His first one was a brown medal for standing second position in the Punjab University, normally Brown indicates third, but in this case it was the second, and that is how he got his first medal. He has also got the Bright Smiles, Bright Futures Award for primary preventive oral health education strategies for children with special needs. This was from the Colgate International and International Society of Pediatric Dentistry. Several other awards have been a part of his life. Ramchandra Oration Award, from the IDA Gulbarga branch, Star Pedodontist Award from Indian Society of Pedodontics and Preventive Dentistry, completion of 10 modules course on orthodontics. And you can see here a number of his pictures where he is beaming happily, receiving the various awards, as well as the trophies that he has gained in his professional career. He is noted to be a speaker and he is seen here with many international delegates for having given a very good uh, talk in various situations. So this is Dr. Nanlal who is dedicated to professional excellence, making knowledge as vista for happiness. Further other awards are there. His 2009 ID, IADR Award, Fellow of the Indian Society of Pedodontics Award, Arun Sethia Award at International College of Dentists, Fellowship Award from Indian Society of Dental Research and one award for the Baby Oral Health Program. Here is his Baby Oral Health Program Award in Thailand. You can see beaming Dr. B. Nandlal sir taking his award and looking very happy being an international delegate there. A noted speaker, Dr. Nandlal sir is invited to the conference circuit where he does give some interesting talks. And here we can see as the most wanted speaker, he is at the Sudha Rastogi College of Dental Sciences and Research, Faridabad. So Dr. Nanlal sir served as a tutor with the College of Dental Surgery, Manipal. He was appointed as a senior lecturer in the year 1989-92 
and as a reader, then subsequently he became a professor and HOD of the Department of Pediatric and Preventive Dentistry. He is also served as the Dean Faculty of Dentistry at JSS University from 2008 to 2015. Presently, he is the head of the Department of uh, Pediatric Dentistry in the same institution. He is a member in several associations, like the life member in Indian Dental Association. He is a life member at the Indian Society of Pedodontics and for the orofacial genetics. He is also a member and an office bearer at the IDA. He has been the EC member. He has been the president of the Indian Society of Pedodontics and Preventive Dentistry from 2013 to 2014. He has been the vice president of the Indian Dental Association, Karnataka State Branch. He has been the president of Indian Society of Pedodontics and Preventive Dentistry. So he has taken on with aplomb all his roles, whether it has been in the professional practice, teaching, his scholarly attributes are definitely very clear. Dr. Nandlal sir has served as a peer reviewer from various national and international journals. Dr. Nandlal sir is associated with many publications. He has 110 publications at the international and national level, and he has presented several guest lectures at various national and international conferences too. He has authored six scientific books and is a contributor to two textbooks. What a wonderful thing about Dr. Nandlal sir, who is a very cheerful person, very fresh, that I just can't help but recollect one interesting brand that Group Pharmaceuticals has when I look at Dr. Nandlal sir, and that is the Fresh Chlor. Fresh Chlor is a very interesting brand for all the age groups containing stabilized chlorine dioxide. Note the term stabilized chlorine dioxide. And it, this fresh chlor has got excellent activity to reduce the microbial load as a mouthwash, as well as oral rinse, manufactured at world-class manufacturing facilities, which Group Pharma has got. This includes at Tarapur near Mumbai and also one near Malur. The quality manufacturing is conforming to the WHO GMP, Schedule M, Schedule M Part 2, and the ISO standards. In fact, there are a lot of certificates that assure the quality of the products from Group Pharma. And the facility is also matching the guidelines as per PICS, which is an important body which helps assess the various manufacturing facilities. Our commitment to CSR is also 100%. In fact, we also believe and we are committed to that important sentence of our professional life, healthy smiles matter. We all know that dental care is, as per the World Health Organization, is a major public health problem and is the most widespread non-communicable disease. And this has been included as the most prevalent condition in the global burden of disease and study. In fact, severe dental caries can impair the quality of life and tooth decay is a frequent cause of absence from school or work. Now, Ms. Vandana, who is also there from Group Pharmaceuticals here, will help me conduct the quiz. The quiz consists of just three questions. I'll flash the question, the fastest finger first. Whoever types the answer first, he will get a gift hamper. So here comes the first question, and Ms. Vandana will indicate Who's the person who has given the first answer accurately and correctly? Name the active ingredient of fresh chlor accurately. Name the active ingredient of fresh chlor accurately. Ms. Vandana, are you able to see the various uh, answers? Yeah, uh, right now it's not coming on in the chat box. Okay. So I request people to answer quickly. In the chat box, you can present your answer. Name the active ingredient of fresh chlor accurately. That means I want the correct name to be typed there. Name the active ingredient of fresh chlor. If any answer comes, please read the name of that individual, Ms. Vandana. Any answers? Or should I pass this question? If people are finding it difficult to answer this question, there are just three questions, and you can please answer it. The fastest figure.
Yes, Miss Vandana, any answers? Yes, Mr. Dhananjay, we have okay, got the Ms. first Vandana. answer. Stabilize okay. chlorine dioxide. Stabilize. Thank you very much. I'll go to the next question. Please be ready. The gift tamper has been booked by Mr. Dhananjay for the first question. Now the next question comes here. The next question is, does fresh chlor contain alcohol? You have to answer with a yes or a no. That's all. Does fresh chlor contain alcohol? Please answer with a yes or a no. The right answer, Ms. Vandana will indicate if the yeah, person has answered. Yes, it's yes, a madam. no, and it has been answered by Mr. Suraj. Mr. Suraj, thank you very much. We will go to the next question. Let us see who will answer this. State true or false. Fresh chlor does not cause taste alteration and tooth discoloration. You have to just say true or false. Fresh chlor does not cause taste alteration or tooth discoloration. As soon as you get the answer, Ms. Vandana, please indicate to. The first answer is by Dr. Jyoti. True. And what? True? Sorry. Yes, uh, sorry, true. Yes, correct. It is true. It does not cause taste alteration and taste discoloration. Thank Correct. you very much. Dr. Jyoti. So, Dr. Jyoti. So, all the three individuals will have to type their uh, residential address with PIN code and the mobile number so we can courier the gift tamper to you. Please do the needful and I will proceed. The dental products worldwide is now a very big growing market with 37 billion US dollars. The implant treatment market is the main driver. And you have the toothpaste market as the largest portion of it. And there is a very good growth of in terms of compounded annual growth rate too. So the fastest moving market is that in India of the toothpaste, which is 10,000 plus crore market. And in that the herbal market as well as the sensitivity toothpaste market are doing very well. So that is the situation. And Group Pharmaceuticals is happy to offer a bouquet of products for the weal and well-being of various sections of the society utilizing the dental products. So we also have a recent introduction in orthodontic appliances and also the pedifluor in the orange flavor, which is also a very popular choice among the practicing dentists. JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research, with whom we have a partnership and we are uh, MO signatories, the crest jewel of JSS AHER is the JSS Dental College and Hospital, which has committed itself to becoming a center of excellence in dental education. And the objective is strengthening the healthcare of the country. And obviously, JSS AHER, through its various courses and colleges, is contributing to the world of oral care and pharmaceuticals because the Indian pharma industry is the world's third largest in terms of volume and stands 14th in terms of value. India is among the top six global pharmaceutical producers in India. So do, ex, ex, uh, do accept our thank you for all your support. And now I will be requesting Dr. Nandlal sir to speak. So before that, I am happy to announce Dr. Nandlal sir has joined in and he will be representing now the his presentation. So here is Dr. Nandlal sir for you. Dr. Nandlal sir, warm welcome to you. You look very smart and the stage is yours. You can unmute yourself, Dr. Nandlal yeah. sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for the uh, wonderful uh, uh, introduction and uh, also to know more about your company. I, at the outset, uh, uh, until I start this uh, presentation, I hope my slides are visible. Your slides are visible, sir, and it is full screen. No problem. Okay, thank you. So I thanks once again on behalf of JSS Academy of Higher Education to uh, each and every one of you, and in particular Group Pharma for uh, making this happen and uh, uh, put across my thoughts across of my 32 years of my experience in this uh, region, particularly uh, India and Asia. Uh, I had very much opportunities to work uh, on the area of high-risk areas in children 
being a challenge today, as we all know. Globally, uh, uh, the, all the uh, six uh, uh, area, regions of the WHO have shown decline from time to time, but it has reached that stage that it is now in the plateau phase. So what is the reason of this? Even today, we are seeing that uh, children below five to six years are having a uh, very high prevalence of dental caries, that is 35% of 69% are affected. So what shall we do about this? Is there an answer? Do we have, uh, is it the, because of the prevalence is high or there is a high risk group which is causing the shift in this uh, uh, projection uh, to a higher prevalence just because there's one group of population which needs a special attention. And uh, so this can be achieved only by the newer models which we can imply and apply from time to time through the various models. I may be going through these slides a little faster because I think uh, uh, there was uh, some technical issue as well as then we have to uh, wind up by 3.30, I suppose. And uh, so uh, so these are models and this is a WHO model where they are developed that it is not just now any more uh, treatment approach just uh, to restore teeth. We need to take care of all the factors environmental factors uh, and socioeconomic factors, as well as the local needs and uh, the practices and the time and the duration and the family uh, matter as well to combat this uh, uh, condition to reduce the burden overall globally. So with this model, I'm sure we want joined here today, learning never stops. Tradition Traditional to the modernization, we look at it differently to achieve the same goals. Yes, dentistry is not new, but we have to look at it. So let us time to time look at what WHO has advised us and made a global indicator. It was earlier that uh, three DMFT was considered as uh, one of the uh, one of the markers as uh, achievement uh, for a, by a 12 year of age, but have we achieved that? Yes, most of the Western countries did achieve and that was possible only because of the introduction of water fluoridation and dentifrices across the globe. And of course the practices and the awareness uh, had to change from time to time and, and they have achieved the goal, but still the higher sectors which have uh, still uncovered needs to be uh, also uh, have to introduce this uh, practices in their uh, oral hygiene methods. Uh, WHO again had set down goals in 1981, uh, not just uh, uh, to achieve the three DMFT as the goal, but also again, they concentrated on a lower age group, five to six years as a target, and they should will, 50% of them at least should be caries free. Similarly, the targets were made for every age group, 85% in 18-year-old and 50% in 35 to 44-year-old and 25. What are we talking about? We are talking about prevention. Do we have preventive measures or we have only treatment approach? Yes, treatment approach is the last resort. Last resort they come. Why does it happen? Are we not advising? Are we not promoting preventive care products across the populations? Is it our duty only to treat? But yes, we also need to have some models which can reach them which should become a, a guideline. So glo globally, WHO has set some uh, guidelines and various associations are forming guidelines for their countries, which becomes part and parcel to develop a program and set these targets and also create guidelines that the patients who come to the practice or the hospital care or a primary health center or any other model, whichever model works to introduce the primary preventive programs early and uh, see that there's not only dental caries, but also periodontal diseases for the specific target age groups to be declined over the time. And again, high-risk groups of necrotizing type and active periodontitis uh, uh, to be de decreased. And particularly in those cases of immunosuppression, and when we know that present situation, the diabetes is on a high and the number of asthmatic patients who are high, uh, number is very high uh, globally. So we need to take care of the periodontal health. So. In spite of the caries preventive programs across the globe, the high risk group categories have to give, been given a special attention from time to time. We can see this change has occurred more because of the preventive approach success than the treatment approach. It's a well understood phenomena. So let us see. So even the best goals to be achieved, a strong base is essential. This is a place, as you can see, uh, most of you who have visited Mysore, um, it's one of the famous uh, church here which is an Italian model. 
So every recently it was again redone uh, again. So even the best of the best needs a, a approach to take care. And I need not say to recall that it is a combination of the factors of uh, the host microbes and the dietary, but also the social, cultural, and behavior aspect. So it is being a biosocial disease which needs a complete attention. Now to achieve this, we need to uh, follow a, a system where we can jointly together say come across various obstacles whichever are there to implement a preventive program across the nation, across the globe. And that will be only possible by promoting through media. Till today, I'm surprised there is no complete oral hygiene method which has been properly been put up on a media where a patient can do a self-learning. Are we giving this time when the patient visit to a clinic? We have always learned as a part of the academia during the course of studies that we have to learn the method of brushing. Do we have the time to deliver the full brushing method to a child or to a parent or to an adult? We have to take out this time and you, yes, we do not have the manpower here. A dental hygienist to be posted in every clinic is a far away dream to reach. So, but however, if some uh, medias are made which can be uh, promoted across the populations. I'm sure this prevention, a proper oral hygiene method itself would be one of the wonderful way. And many a times with uh, some of the studies which we have done, we find that most of them have neglected uh, the brushing on the inner surface of both the palatal surface as well as the lingual surface. It is most of the time only the frontal uh, buccal surfaces are being touched by them. So to maintain the best still needs preventive measure. This is, I, I'm sure you all are very familiar with the palace. And we, I was fortunate to have um, a guest from Netherlands who was the uh, developer of the early caries diagnosis by QLF who visited us as we have that unit here established first center of training. And with that, we are doing multiple models and observing various preventive changes occurring. Now, let us see the levels of prevention. I'm sure this is the oldest one. I'm not trying to talk about this. So the prevention has been in place way back in 1958. The different models have been approached. Now, coming back to what are the models? So, of course, we know the primary prevention is by delivery of fluoride through the water supply or to the professional. Now, professional supply applications can be recommended for the various target age groups. To Just to, to summarize again, 3, 6, 9, and 12 years have been marked for fluoride applications. Are we practicing this? We should introduce. Are we at least, if not applying topical fluoride, why are we, why are we not recommending the mouth rinse program? It has been proved very well that the dentifrices do not reach in the interproximal areas. So we need easily. So we need some other agent which can, you know, the like a fluid, though the foaming action has been proved, but most of the paste are without foam, particularly pediatric toothpaste, the foaming action has been found and it's been recommended to be much, much negligible compared to the adult. And even today, the foaming action, once the foaming action is much more, the surface tension, uh, does not allow it to have a better contact, though it causes foaming and bubbling. There is advantages as well as disadvantages. So I would say a mouth rinsing program should be introduced early. And if you see the protocols, which I'm going to show shortly, they are introduced even in a six-year-old and even lower than. Uh, it only depends upon how as, is it supervised or not. So I would strongly recommend that a topical fluoride should be introduced professionally in every practice to every patient, either in the first appointment or as the last appointment. And this, and also recommend, recommend a fluoride mouth rinse, very important, even before restoring, because it would help to harden the soft carious lesion and it would create a surface which is uh, would allow us to do a conservative cutting than to uh, remove much more uh, carious portion. Now, of course, dietary counseling is well known and it's to be part and parcel. Even this, we do not try to give enough time for the uh, in a busy setting where we could uh, guide them. And it is very simple. And shortly, we at JSS are planning to do a, a, a dietary counseling, which is going to be an exclusive service, which would be open to the public as a separate treatment option, just like a diet counseling, the medical care. This would be a novel approach to reach the public and be uh, focused on prevention through diet by itself as a major uh, correction factor to be implemented for prevention of caries. Coming to the secondary prevention, of course, we have uh, uh, basically uh, treating the existing uh, condition, whatever the dysfunction is there. In such situation, many a times we forget that uh, uh, 
or we when we are not supposed to do the probing uh, to check the incipient caries lesion because as per the today's recommendation, your probing can create a disturbance and a break in the enamel continuity. And many times it is observed only by a radiograph, the initial lesions can be detected on the proximal surfaces. And is it safe? What is the recommendation? We all have to have guidelines. When you recommend a radiograph to a patient, we, we should know whether it is ethical to advise when there is no clear evidence clinically visible caries so is the radiographs allowed? What is the protocols? Today, the patients would insist, why you need a radiograph? So we need to have the guidelines in place. And many guidelines are there which should be available in the practice to ex express and explain to the patients. Now, coming to the secondary prevention. Yeah. And coming to the tertiary prevention, uh, again, it involves the treatment phase aimed at a maximum limitation of disability by replacement of the lost structure. Re replacements of the lost structures can be seen here. I think I have some problem here. The attachments are not opening. Um, I will be switching over to some other presentation parallelly here to just, uh, is that okay? Or I'll show it in the end. Yeah, okay. better you show it in the end, sir. Yeah, so it. yeah, so I'll proceed with this and some of the slides I will mark it. So the tertiary prevention is a replacement of lost teeth structure and uh, uh, it may be um, multi-surface caries lesion. It can be a uh, extracted space due to premature loss of the primary teeth, etc. And we need to have a follow-up, which is very important. And uh, I have some present slides to show you, which maybe I'll uh, open the individual folders a little later. So caries risk assessment, how do we proceed? Caries risk assessment is a determination of the likelihood of the inc incidence of caries, both cavitated and, and in uh, and un non cavitated the reason i say non cavitated is the fluoride applications which we apply we need to record and try to follow them up and we do not record the caries just by visible cavities we have to record a and place a patient as a high risk category even in the if there are grade 1 lesions and even non cavitated lesions say if it is a pit and fissure discoloration so as we call them as most often white spot lesions so they, if we if we record these changes and we see that they are not progressing over the time, over a three month or a six months to the next stage of cavitation, or uh, it may even worse, even a, uh, it may go to the discoloration from a chalky white to a brownish discoloration. So, and whether it is arrested. So these type of observations have to be done from time to time. Unless we document this type of uh, uh, caries assessment in the initial lesions on the patient file, we will not be able to proceed further. Now, coming to what type of preventive protocol should be adopted for th this uh, challenges in the young children here. Now, I would like to just run through from time to time. You can see way back in 1995, there was a clear discrimination that uh, what sh how do you brand how do you put a patient into a low risk, moderate risk, or high risk based on the past caries experience. I'm sure in the uh, uh, olden uh, books, we can see that whenever they say high risk caries, it was only the rampant caries, nursing caries, or multiple caries lesion. But look at the changes now. Uh, the WHO itself, when it has recommended three DMFT as the goal of WHO, that means it should not have been much more than that, that to over a period of time for a specific age, so when we are talking in terms of uh, high risk, low risk, and moderate risk, it depends upon what is the past caries experience. Uh, if you look at this, we can see very uh, clearly that uh, uh, when you say low risk, there should not be any decay. And, um, and when you say moderate risk, it's a past experience of a DMFT of DMFS of zero, only one active lesion, one active lesion as a moderate caries in a child. And high risk is two active lesions. It is a very sm small, and we call them into a high-risk category. That means a special attention has to be given, even if there are two decayed teeth. But when do the patients turn up? 
they come with 10 decay teeth and the much more challenges more pain and we are trying to do treatment approach so where have we failed so again it is very important we recognize these conditions very early uh, when the adults are visiting a practice so will be their children so will they be asking uh, care for their kids it's time that we take care and see the future generations are uh, not having much burden uh, both to the family as to the global challenges similarly adults as well we have a similar uh, type of uh, uh, criteria i'm not going i'm going to show you a series of this uh, criteria because i'm just trying to say way back 1958 1995 again if each and every association globally have are developing how to combat these problems do we have this in our practice are we not having our duty to deliver these models to our patients is a very important aspect which we should introduce in day-to-day -day, day -day practice, both at academic centers as well as at a private practice setups. So even this uh, new recent one included various other parameters. It would be some time that you one would have a diagnostic lab or a oral biology lab in an Indian setup where we can send these variables. Uh, but however, uh, the future is all these biomarkers would be available today to be used on the chair side, like we already have a pH uh, detecting strips by two of the companies uh, which are uh, available even in India. So at least one method should be adopted to diagnose what is not visible, which uh, most of the time what happens, the patient just clean, brushes very well on the day and come. Are we disclosing the plaque? There is no point because the day they come to the visit, we tell them to clean up well and come, we are going to do a filling directly. So that concept is strong. We should see how is he coming on a routine day. And if he has, uh, he has just brushed up his teeth and uh, used a proper mouthwash with a good aroma and uh, he has come on that day, we have not, we are placing a wrong material in the mouth. We do not know whether it will sustain. When he's not, next day he's not going to maintain at all. So we need to ensure and record what is his true st stage when he comes on the first day. Most of the time we do not, of course, always we say a patient wants to have an appointment and a treatment day as the first day itself. But we have to dedicatedly spend more time for recording uh, the basic uh, uh, findings and see how is he going to go forward and how are the changes going to take place when we are going to restore his full mouth rehabilitation. So again, uh, this is another famous uh, uh, AAPD guideline for caries risk assessment called as CAT. And some of them are very simple to adopt. I was just telling you that in a high risk group is uh, uh, new caries, uh, two caries lesion. Here they have said that it is caries lesion. I'm not going to discuss much all in detail here, but I'm trying to highlight about the caries experience. Low risk is if no caries develops in 24 months, only then he's at low risk. Whereas earlier, it, this type of definition was not there. It was just uh, only concentrating on 12 months, no caries at all. Here within 24 months, suppose he develops after uh, within 24 months. So the past 24 months, totally he should not have caries. Then, then only you can call him at slow risk. And when do you call him at high risk, the caries teeth when in the past 12 months, if he's developing? Again, uh, this was further revised again uh, in a short uh, table like this so that one can keep it in a private practice and easily find out whether he had a caries during the last 12 months or whether he had between 12 to 24 months and more than 24 months. If you follow one variable, I think we can achieve our goals and we know what are we doing? Are we rehabilitating, trying to build up windows in a burning house? Or are we trying to extinguish the fire first, which is the which is the bacterial and the host uh, habits and factors which would be responsible to sustain whatever restorative care we are? What is the point building up, uh, giving a uh, restorative uh, uh, cosmetic filling when the basic hygiene is bad? So is it not the duty that hygiene is restored first? So it is very important to improve the general health through oral health, uh, a special uh, program was held uh, by International Conference of Asian Academy of Preventive Dentistry, and I was fortunate to join there and present the needs of this uh, challenges. How do we monitor working together in search to meet the goals? And what are the tools, other tools available? I just showed the past ones. I'm going to show you some more uh, simple methods which we can adopt and uh, age-wise we follow. Again, it's very important that the the preventive measure, the fluoride regime at least can be followed in children right from six years 
and at least coinciding with the ages of, uh, um, of course, socioeconomic reasons would be uh, not allowing them to use, practice mouth rinsing throughout, like though they, we recommend for adults, you know, you can use a mouth rinse or twice a day, but why not once a day? My protocol here at JSS, we follow at least weekly once. There is a recommendation very clearly in the guidelines, weekly once mouth rinsing should be allowed. And at least at the peak ages, peak ages of 3, 6, 9, 12, corresponding to the eruption of the young permanent teeth, which are still immature because there is something called as post-eruption maturation. So I would recommend strongly to follow a mouth rinse program at least weekly once if it's a socioeconomically issues are there or at least during the peak phases of this 3, 6, 9, 12 years where the new maturation is taking place. When the fluoride gets incorporated during the maturation phase, it has got a deeper penetration and it will have, uh, would, would fight or it would help to become more resistant to the kerogenic challenges across. And yes, even in adults, there are situations what the question comes whether adults it is going to work out. Yes, it would work even in the adults because there are always micro cracks available. Seen most of the teeth, if you see, there's a percentage, 50% of the population do have micro cracks in the all, both anteriorly and posteriorly. And uh, there is always a need for interproximal areas which need to be attended to. Yes, the other most important recommendation today is high risk in for. Uh, high-risk caries is application of facial sealants. Sealants have changed from time to time. I'm not going to discuss the in detail what sealants are, but how many of the dentists or how many of us are practicing sealants? If we are looking at the cost, we are, we are trying to seal the teeth even before the caries develops. We are doing a service and at the same time, we are also earning. It is not that the caries is not going to, you know, it, it should develop and then we need to fill it up. Even sealant has got the amount of the cost for a sealant is equivalent to that of a filling. So if you do the sealing if for these young children, the more they would definitely be uh, free from the pain and the, the challenges which they have to meet when they have to suffer with the pain and miss the classes and come over uh, with, uh, with multiple visits. Yes, sealant has been recommended today. Earlier it was thought of only for young permanent teeth, but today it's recommended even for deciduous teeth. If all the first and the second primary molars can be sealed, it would be wonderful. And today we have a glass enemas, which is again very nicely uh, showing a good retention and we have done studies to see that uh, there is a retention rate and a karyogenic reduction has been observed. So my strong recommendation again is glass and sealants for these young children would be a wonderful way we can do service and see that the burden is reduced and it would become a national program as well. Fluoride tablets is not available in India, but it has been in practice in some of the countries and it is still available in the OTC in most of the countries. And I do not know whether this is part of the dental pharmaceutical company product or whether it is going to be a medical pharmaceutical product. I'm at to really see whether there are any guidelines which should not allow this to happen in depending upon the country to country, where and how it should be. The additional is fluoride varnish. Now the sphere of swallowing, aspiration has always been there. We just stress the need of uh, um, need of uh, uh, method of uh, topical application of home fluoride application uh, is by mouth rinse, but in the professional way, we apply APF gel or we apply sodium fluoride. Uh, but then we do have what is called fluoride varnish. Uh, of course, we have, uh, I've just given one example. We have got uh, many, uh, even OCO company has got, bifluoride is there. And uh, we have uh, Colgate has brought, uh, taken over the DuraFat and it is a uh, Colgate joint product of DuraFat. And uh, ICPA also had tried to bring out, I'm sure shortly, many fluoride varnish products are going to come in this country because the need is for fluoride varnish, which would become a national program, uh, which I'm sure uh, there are a lot of innovations required because uh, it acts for eight hours in the mouth. Uh, because once you apply, it takes about eight hours and you do not eat uh, or drink anything, at least for the first four hours is the instruction given very clearly. And today we also have what is called as MI varnish, uh, which is also having a calcium phosphate combination. Also, um, also we uh, can apply chlorexidin varnish in the cases where it has been seen, but it is uh, again not easily available today. Uh, chloric, chlorexidin varnish has been tried. It is another area which can be explored. It's a future market for the country, uh, as we can see here. 
and particularly those cases who are having uh, learning disabilities and intellectual disabilities, it's very important we can do the service to them. So second and tertiary, uh, as I said, rehabilitation, total rehabilitation and extractions are part and parcel of this uh, care. But however, diagnosis should be taken by bite wing radiographs. Now I'm giving a very simplified uh, Carry, uh, carries protocol uh, to be assessment protocol, which was uh, uh, taught to me when I was uh, a student. So I always keep reviewing that and seeing what the changes are. Of course, this is a looks very traditional, simple, and uh, basically we should categorize them once they are in a medical, having a medical history. We consider them at equally as uh, high risk straight away. Then comes the dental history previous dental treatment, diet and oral hygiene habits, and a family history. If the, fam the full family, I know these are all very strange. Uh, when you say family history, it has been proved that there is always a transfer of strep mutants from mother to child is well documented. And if the mother is having a uh, untreated mouth, and uh, particularly if you do find 50% to 40% of the populations who have not yet visited the dentist still in their lifetime and suffering with the dental disease. So why are we in that stage? Why are we not having uh, the healthcare delivery system uh, not have this inequalities among the populations? We need to mitigate this uh, inequalities and only if we reach with multiple programs nationally or through locally with the various NGOs, we can achieve these goals. So this was one of the oldest concept of increment of one case lesion per year, smooth surface lesion. Please, please observe smooth surface lesion. Once you see the chalky white appearance, uh, yes, we should not have the temptation to drill and try to fill it up just to make it uh, uh, look cosmetic. Let me tell you, when you do a, a small filling on the buccal surface, I'm sure though whatever color matches we have, uh, there would be a difference. There will be a border shown up after some time. And we are talking of kids. I'm do, I'm sure they will not be able to reinvest multiple visits again and again. But the same thing with the treatment, You are, the fluoride chart regime or a fluoride varnish or fluoride regime also would achieve and reversals are achievable. We have seen the reversals and many studies have documented very clearly that they are, you can get back the normal uh, enamel dis, uh, color back to its normal, uh, by both chromo uh, uh, color metry method as well as we also have seen from Q uh, quantitative light fluorescence method and uh, even dentocult uh, uh, dent diagnodent which is a caries detector which we can see that caries has been arrested and rather reversed. Yes, decalcification in the cervical third of the teeth is a big challenge and I'm sure that this is well known and rampant caries, nursing caries and a plaque score, institute score. And yes, disclosing is a big challenge, but there are indices which we have been trained to use and uh, see that. Now coming to the diet history, it's total sugar exposure. It's very important to get at least 24 hour diet recall and uh, try to uh, help the patient. Like, you know, uh, even it can be done on the same visit, he, the patient can recall the diet uh, backward 24 hours and you can charge them. Diet counseling is uh, chargeable today. There are clinics making, you know, obesity clinic. They pay some thousand rupees, 5,000 rupees package for six visits. Why not we, dentistry? Why not we do the diet counseling? Who has failed to give the diet counseling? Is it the general dietitian or is it the pediatrician? Why not be delivered through us? We have the right, we have learned, we are supposed to deliver our diet counseling and we can do at least the total sugar exposure. There is going to be a shortly a program on this, again from our organization, training for diet counseling. And I'm sure each one of the, who wants to benefit from this program can register with us and learn how to do go ahead with the diet counseling and it which can be a chargeable service. So total diet exposures is eight. Now we are talking of total diet exposure eight. Normal recommendation is three times. We are talking of kids here. They would be doing a lot of snacking. So we have to restrict that at meal sugar exposure should be maximum. Now it has been proved that at meal sugar exposure is least harmful because the sugar is combined along with the meal and it gets neutralized. Whereas when the in-between sugar exposures are taken, it would cause damage. So this is a, a finding which is not new. But I would like to put across at least this general tips to the patient would really help. Please club 
the two meals together. If the snacking is there, he, a child is having a biscuit at uh, four o'clock and a cake at five o'clock and six o'clock, he has a bunch of uh, uh, sweets. Uh, uh, he's dividing every one hour and having three sugar exposures. It is always to have, if yes, quantity should be minimal, but at the same time, but at the same time, it's very important that uh, they can eat it together. We all know that whenever there's a sugar exposure, the pH drop takes place in 15 minutes. Uh, it comes back to normal in 15 minutes. So if he's taking one or two items, let him have a biscuit and a, and a cake and a milk together. So it will consider as one sugar exposure and the pH drop will remain for only for the same 15 minutes rather than to have three episodes of high uh, cardiogenic challenge of going below 5.4, a critical pH where the tooth is going to decay. Now, coming to the salivary flow, yes, we have seen, I'm sure you don't have to do a test. You can make out from the patient who's having extra salivation, who's having a dry mouth. And whenever it, and it's a simple test, you just need to keep some uh, tubes uh, with saliva tubes uh, where the patient can select. Uh, uh, if the high risk group, you have to give them this type of test and it's chargeable again. And you can tell them that, see, your salivary flow is less. And if unless you rehabilitate all the teeth just by one tooth extraction, you are not going to uh, going to meet this uh, and get back to normal. And you have a formula for this. I'm sure many of us know about this. You can calculate for the age specific and stimulate saliva of even 15 minutes who have got a very low uh, flow, uh, salivary flow, we may have to extend beyond five minutes because and they may not have a capacity to understand because when you say stimulated uh, saliva, if they are going repeated tests. Similarly, viscosity, when it is uh, values, uh, visco the more the viscous, the more uh, chances of high risk. And uh, so you can see the standard values. pH. So I just now said recently that, uh, uh, not recently, it's more than now 10 years, um, let me tell you, there are. I used to follow this uh, even before the companies used to bring out, uh, have brought out this uh, uh, pH strips. Uh, yes, we cannot put in the. We have to collect the saliva sample and uh, uh, put it on the uh, on this uh, uh, pH indicators uh, strips which are available. And uh, let me tell you, in our laboratory, we used to use even the chemistry lab strips. I'm sure you would be able to pick up this point and you can use, it is very, very economic. Uh, yes, the kit of the pH is very expensive. We all know it. And you can, can you charge so much to the patient? I, some, I started with using first with simple chemistry strips, which we use in the laboratories. Now, Snyder test is uh, now available in the form of uh, Dentocard, which is available and uh, still in India, we are not having this. Uh, it, it would be wonderful if this can become a part and parcel and if it is two plus, that means if the tube shows, uh, half of the tube shows color change within 24 hours from green to yellow, it means it's a very, very highly caries active. And this would help us not only to diagnose, but also to monitor. So we are going to do a diet counseling. If the patient has really followed the diet, he would be able to uh, control. I mean, we can see that if any dietary changes occurred and after you have finished all the restoration, because it, this Snyder test is lactobacillus-based uh, uh, test. So lactobacillus count is supposed to decrease after restorations, after extractions. All the active caries lesions are closed. So the lactobacillus count has to decrease. And so the Snyder test will show a reversal uh, and it should show negative. Similarly, of course, these are all, you may say it's an academic-based academic, academic -based testing. But when a medical doctor can send to the laboratories, why not dentists? I'm sure these tests will come in the future pathology labs across the country, and it will be a need to meet the challenges. So this was about, uh, now coming to the phase-wise, only emerge, I would say this treatment phase in high-risk groups should not be straight away load them with uh, uh, restorative care. Yes, you need to arrest the caries lesion. Please put them on chlorexidin mouthwash, chlorexidin gel, uh, to reduce the streptomotons count immediately. It has been found that immediate reduction achieved, as you know, it is a, the golden standard is chlorexidin, and just now you heard from our uh, uh, group pharma. It is I will. It was I'm sure many of the many of us did not realize that uh, a product had been launched long back, and uh, it is uh, the all the problems of the past with the chlorexidin causes color color discoloration, uh, and it also uh, causes a loss of taste, and also it causes uh, um, it is uh, having uh, alcohol and all those type of fears. All have gone now, and it is. Uh, sweet and it is naturally available and uh, it is uh, 
does not cause discretion, which was a concern of earlier. But here, it is not only this product. I would say if you are having a cosmetic filling or a glass amount of filling, which you're going to do, and if you have to control, when you are having 10, 20 fillings restored in the mouth, you need some antibacterial uh, product to see that the bacteria are not again colonizing again because he is going to have the same snacking again, continue. He is not going to change in his dietary pattern. Today, you cannot, though we say we are going to do a diet counseling, but can you really make him starve? And, and that to the children. And so is the case with adults. So normal dietary are their wishes and their choices of life. But so you need a preventive product to combat this. And today the future is the enzyme based. So all the aspects, what moderates the bacteria, what but, uh, what uh, tries to inhibit the bacterial action, inhibits the, or strengthens the forms a layer to a positive negative charge on the tooth. But what now is uh, enzyme based products are coming up and all this would be a recommendation to first arrest the lesion first, reduce the bacterial load, and then restore. Only emergency, yes, he's got an acute pain. He needs to do a pulpite, uh, pulpal exposure. We can try to doing that. So, and then comes the phase two where uh, you are going to uh, complete ro uh, oral rehabilitation can be planned. So the phase one appointment will be just education. Step one, step two, recording of all this should be, which is the future of India, I'm sure. And please, please spend time on oral hygiene measure. And even mouth rinsing, it's very easy to say, uh, use a mouth rinse. Even, even today, uh, uh, to my clinic, when the patient comes, I say, use a mouth rinse. I have to explain, explain to them, please take it so much, put it into the car, in the cup which is available, and then you put it, not to put in the steel glass, not to put it in, there's no, it's not a big exercise running around the house to do a mouth rinse. It should be user-friendly. So it has to be easily dispensed and it can be practiced. And motivation. Yes, mouth rinsing should be supervised and it should be kept in a place where the child accidentally should not swallow. And the dispensing is safe. Let me tell you, if you are thinking that, oh, we have done the safety studies, why are large bottles not being supplied to the patient to take carry home? Because for safety. The amount which is dispensed is very amount which would last them for a week at least. And even accidentally, if it's if something uh, uh, nobody can swallow, even the toothpaste, they say there has been a study. The patient would start showing acute symptoms uh, before he it can, can cause toxicity. And yes, there are very few reports of such kind. So please pre prescribe mouth rinses, uh, both whether it's a fluoride-based mouth rinse for a reversal of caries lesion, uh, whether you're using Amflor or you're using any other Product Amflor, I have had a wonderful experience, and we have launched the program of uh, uh, pediatric uh, mouth rinse as well as uh, uh, way back. Uh, and Pedifloor was launched first in Mysore uh, toothpaste, which was very safe for young children. If there is a fear by the parent that they are not fluoride lovers and they want low fluoride toothpaste and safe, and uh, which is uh, uh, having a, a no, uh, I mean, does not have an artificial sweeteners. I mean, what I mean to say is sugars which uh, always has a fear of that and uh, it can be practiced and we are launched in a school-based program so that all the children uh, in a rural setup are benefited and uh, we have been fortunate that uh, this program has uh, uh, we, we are doing in the children which are residential school children and pedifloor toothpaste has been tried out and we have been very happy with its uh, uh, acceptability tolerance taste as well as uh, uh, what do you call that uh, uh, carogenic, anti carogenic effect. And with the, though the clinical trial would take about uh, six months to one year, but with our unit of QLF, we can report within three weeks, we can see the changes in the mouth, uh, which can detect to that level of mineral change on the initial caries lesion, which becomes clinically evident to reversal after one year. A one year clinical trial versus 21, uh, which we have seen very easily in our residential school based program. So diet counseling, I said 24 diet diary. And after you do the counseling, you recall after 10 days, there has to be a gap. Yes, you can give them every alternate date appointment. You need to give a gap of 10 days. Why? Because you have given them a new method of brushing. And then you have to see whether you need, child needs to master it. Then you give them a bigger promise that now I'm going to give you a silver filling or I'm going to give a glass enamel filling or a composite filling. And he started using mouth rinses. Now, if the children are very small, I even recommend to topically apply the mouth rinse. It will be very strange, but I did find a document recently somewhere uh, mentioning that uh, 
Mountains can be applied topically in a very, very young child whom parent is having same 2.5 ml can be applied topically. You know, dispense 5 ml. Of course, we say 10 ml, but sometimes I would say 5 ml for a small child, uh, 6 ml, uh, so that he rinses and spits out without any difficulty of aspiration. I mean, without any need of, uh, I mean, accidental aspiration. And uh, so is the case with uh, uh, topical application. I would just recommend the use of, uh, uh, I'm sure the buds are available, cotton buds, and we dip it and apply it uh, several times on the teeth and uh, leave it there. And up, the patient can rinse up to that up, uh, with the water, or again, we wipe it again with the uh, wet cotton uh, with the same year, uh, with the year uh, cotton buds. So this is what I recommend for children below five years, but I will be surprised in one of the recent IAPD uh, guidelines, they said mouth rinse can be used even below five years. Today's kids are smart and they said they know how to spit it out, but then I would recommend 2.5 ml for them. Of course, the dosage and effectiveness is yet to be proved, but if there is, there's something better than nothing. And uh, similarly, we apply the fluoride varnish, topical fluorides at uh, last step, when the patient is leaving uh, the clinic. And uh, the diet counseling which you need, you need to evaluate after 15 days. Uh, particularly, you need to dedicate a time uh, for diet counseling because though you have collected the diet diary, you may not have time to do the counseling on the same day. You can do this counseling the next visit because you have recommended them a proper brushing. You have done all the temporary fillings. Now the child is able to eat properly and he munch properly and change the new diet habits has been uh, put where you would have told. One more thing is in high caries group, I would say zero sugar exposure. There is no question of three times. For a period of one month, no sugar exposure, including the milk, has, been, has to be advised very strongly. And you will see the change. You will see there will be no plaque in the mouth if they just reduce because they add sugar to the milk, they add sugar to the rice, they add sugar to the... Um, banana, already banana is sweet, they'll put honey to it and sugar to it. Yes, honey is to be uh, proved to be good, but at the same time, it needs to be considered. Of course, scaling and pollination for the older children, please observe the grade one, grade two lesions, whether they are rested over the, of course, it's a too short time, but you will definitely find some change. You'll see some change there. Yes, endodontic procedures can be completed. So in a period of one month package, the patient should not just get rehabilitative care, but also preventive care. But yes, if you seal them first and then go by step by step and uh, you can repeat the Snyder test if you have a test or a pH strip test, whether the diet practices which you have recommended, if he has adopted a proper oral hygiene, his pH has changed. And similarly, if you have used a mouth rinse, if you have used a tooth, if the child has started using a mouth rinse or started using a proper fluoridated toothpaste, you will see the pH is, is not low in the plaque. Uh, if, you, uh, if you suspend the plaque in a, a distilled water and test it on the pH strip, you will find the pH is still neutral. So these are the small tests you can prove to the patient. And if it is still low, you can always tell the patient you are not using the mouth rinse properly. You are not using the floor um, oral hygiene instructions properly. And that way you can uh, introduce. So you can see that... Uh, Topical fluoride, 0.05%, 5 to 7, I would recommend 5 to 7 ml. Uh, I have seen this in some one of the documents long back, and I'm, I would recommend that for children. But, of course, instruction is 10 ml. This is just because the child should be able to keep in the mouth, even a six-year-old child. So, and yes, three-monthly follow-up. Yes, to manage the high-risk caries. Through medical setting is another approach. This is our JSS hospital where we have a pediatric dental clinic. We are promoting this mouth rinse program even through to the children who visit to the JSS hospital. And this is a wonderful platform. Patients move several patients or the population visiting the medical hospital much more than the dental hospital. So the product moving and getting recommended for preventive measures is one of the model today, the FDI and is recommending as well as WHO uh, a center attached to the, JS, uh, to the hospital setting. And that would be a wonderful way to achieve this prevention. And as I told you, we are using Amflow product, mouth rinsing uh, to be introduced to the, all the patients who visit our JSS hospital and those who are in inpatient. We find most of them don't carry the toothbrush to the, when they are in the hospitalized, whether it is the children or whether it's adults. I know they are in a serious uh, condition, but 
where they cannot brush, they can always rinse. Rinsing would be a wonderful practice to reduce the hospital stay and to prevent the spread of the infection and uh, around the area and for, it may deteriorate the, from, from the antibiotics they are taking. So this is the school which is having 4,000 children here. We introduced this, uh, this mountain sink program when the first children enter the school uh, because after that they master the brushing and they go back to dentifrice and then we introduce at three years, six year, nine year age groups, I mean six year, nine year and uh, 12 year age group mouth rinsing program as a compulsory program at our residential school because it's the responsibility of us that these children who are housing, they do not develop caries just because they are away from home. And this is our pedifloor toothpaste which we have also introduced at the school low fluoride toothpaste, and uh, we are very happy that it's acceptable. We have a treatment clinic as well at the managing this, uh, I would say any residential school or even in a case of uh, destitutes or care homes are high risk category group because the caretakers in, in most of the, maybe internationally they have them guidelines, but here, whether they really take care of, uh, you know, we say caretakers, that's a recent study which says after every feed, you have to wipe the teeth of the baby. I do not know whether the caretakers would do that. So who will take care of that? So it is necessary that even in our rural setup, the hospital we have, which have an excellent setup, along with me is a visitor from Latrobe University who was uh, uh, very much fascinated and they have started a similar, uh, that uh, Latrobe also has a rural dental school uh, there. And they were very much fascinated to have a student exchange program with us and see what are the treatment success stories of ours, how are we achieved, how are the kids accepting and what. So thank you very much. And um, this was, I was fortunate to meet uh, the former aid president as well during his visit to our institutions and uh, with my children. And uh, our experience with the group Pharma products has been, uh, I have added up the slides already, and it has been a wonderful working uh, on this preventive products and on the pathway to caries prevention, I think we all should join together and uh, and see that we are uh, able to achieve the goals. And I would like to just share one more, one or two more slides if it is possible to, uh, I'll unshare myself. I was just telling uh, that uh, the dietary effects. So uh, we had studied the influence of dietary solvents on the strength of the commonly used yeast. I, I don't know. Can we see this, sir? No, sir, it is not showing. I can, you have to click it again, I think. That particular dietary effects, it's not yet come. Can you just okay. uh, click? Uh, it has not opened. Please. Now? Uh, now it is there. Please continue. Yeah. So we had evaluated the influence of dietary solvents on the strength of the commonly used aesthetic restored materials and in vitro study. And uh, we all know food stimulating liquids uh, uh, are done in the laboratory setting and uh, see the effect on the restorative care. So we do talk about it, but do we advise anything about it? So that is where I'm saying we should really, really uh, ensure that we are uh, telling them to in incorporate a diet counseling role. And uh, we found that uh, um, the various materials which have been tried here, uh, various materials which have been tried here, uh, have shown that is uh, uh, catacmolar, compomer, and uh, NC. All this have found that uh, there is a slight deterioration yeah, as the uh, they are kept in the distilled water, citric acid, and ethanol. But haptin had a better uh, results. So uh, haptin type of dietary exposures would be uh, not bad. But when it even a distilled water, it is showing a deterioration in the uh, amount of the uh, punch strength. That's called as uh, the, the reason for it to fail. Now, why am I trying to tell this? Now, if you have to strengthen this, so we need to use a mouth rinse with fluoride. So it will recharge these materials and prevent time to time. It, any mouth rinse, we say uh, fluoridated product is acting for 12 hours. So 
I have uh, even recommended that mouth rinses, of course, it, is it good to be used along with the toothpaste or along after, after the meal? I would suggest if you're using a toothpaste before the meal, you can use a mouth rinse after a meal. So whatever the diet you had and the challenges have been attacked uh, has caused any deterioration of the diet, it can be uh, against uh, uh, taken care by this fluoridated mouth rinse, which can reach this restorative material and sustain. These were the results which we found, catacmolar, com compomer, and nanocomposite. Nanocomposite had a better uh, strength because of the fibers in it, but still it was deteriorating. It was deteriorating. I did the fracture resistant had gone down. So my recommendation is, uh, yes, haptin type of dietary exposure would be okay, but at the same time, I can always uh, recommend a fluoride product would uh, help to see that these challenges which are made can be reduced. So I would recommend at least immediate mouth rinsing post meal, uh, even if it is after the breakfast. If uh, I'm sure there is one or two studies on that, and they have found uh, that it could be a wonderful practice uh, to introduce the mouth rinsing program after a meal. And similarly, I have one more interesting uh, And that is well known. We all know that uh, fluoride release is uh, there in the. Uh... Can you see this, sir? No, not yet, sir. Okay. I think it didn't open, or uh, maybe yeah, it's yeah. another screen. Yeah. Now? Yeah, now it's there, sir. And yeah. uh, I think you can also start closing the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is uh, again a fluoride release from the materials. We know, not, we know very well that uh, um, uh, fluoride, uh, glass enamels contain high fluoride level and they are, they are report, they release fluoride both inward into the uh, carious area as well as uh, towards the uh, ex external, that is to the uh, oral, uh, into this oral cavity in saliva to keep uh, and the challenge is low and uh, fight against the uh, development of the carious lesion. So we try to evaluate whether the fluoride, and when it, the fluoride leaches out fully, how does it, does it get recharged? The glass enamers restoration particularly have got a capacity for recharging. So whenever we are giving a glass enamer restoration, uh, they need to be recharged again. Only then they can fight. So I would recommend again a strongly a fluoridated high fluoride toothpaste uh, uh, or uh, for uh, like even today that IAPD guideline says you can recommend even high fluoride toothpaste of 1000 ppm in high risk caries group even for children and in western side they have brought out 1500 and 2000 uh, ppm tooth fluoridated toothpaste for recommendation for adults. So uh, in high risk group yes if I say weekly once or uh, the child is using a high fluoride toothpaste would be a recommendation or uh, to recharge this glass enamers when uh, when they are uh, uh, most of the children we do not in uh, do uh, uh, amalgam fillings anymore uh, we are doing glass enamers and this glass enamer needs to be recharged and we all know that bonding strength is, with primary teeth is still a challenge so unless and until we strengthen this uh, uh, joints of uh, whatever uh, the joint between the filling restoration we will not be able to uh, sustain the the bond as well as uh, success of the retention of the fillings. So this was some of one of the studies to prove that the fluoride recharging did re-enter the flu re uh, fluoride recharging by use of a mouth rinse and by a dentifrice into the glass enema or by a daily uh, usage of uh, uh, twice uh, brushing and uh, sorry, once daily and uh, twice daily uh, it was practiced and uh, we did a study here and similar studies are of course there, but we wanted to, uh, we have done this to prove that uh, really this type of mechanisms do work and uh, were very interesting and to adopt in our day-to-day -day practice to have a clinical based evidence, which helps us to recommend to everybody. Yes, sir. So I think uh, we have come to the fag end, sir. Yeah, we almost, uh, if uh, I just, yeah, so just yeah, one more. if you okay. allow me one more uh, okay, just okay. One. 
at the hyperlinks did not open so that's why ah. no i wanted to show some clinical pictures as well so No. Maybe we can take it up in phase two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some other time, maybe we can add yeah. it up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, one or two questions. Can I field them also, sir? Yeah, yeah, sure, sir. I, can, I think you should stop sharing. Yeah, yeah. Can you stop sharing the screen, sir? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so sir, uh, first of all, I am very grateful to all the attendees because they have been very engaging and a lot of questions are there. So which means it was a gripping subject uh, presentation by you. Most no. importantly, what I found is that you are having a lot of uh, matter which is practically <laughs> relevant. Sir, mm -hmm. uh, one question that has come from Dr. Rekha Shetty, madam. Uh, what about the toxicity of this fluoride uh, varnishes which you are speaking about? Uh, there is uh, there is uh, enough studies to prove that a single dose which we are using is just 0.5 ml, and it is uh, even if the it is swallowed, it is safe. But it is not going to be swallowed because it's going to be sticking to it, and it will be removed while with a brush. Uh, it okay. does not peel off by itself. So the before eating, they are supposed to brush and uh, the whole thing comes out so there is no danger of it leaching also and no 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 it doesn't leach outward it has ad adherence towards inward 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 okay, towards to the tooth that's interesting and sir uh, dr rekha shetty madam again wanted to know this chlorhexidine varnishes which are recommended will it contribute to discoloration of the teeth uh, the varnish, which is uh, chlorhexidine varnish, is that's what it, in India. I I don't I don't think it is a product has uh, reached the one which is available is international. We need to really uh, it has not come. Uh, if they have not changed the molecule, mm. obviously it will have. So it we have to have. Uh, we, have, we have to find out what exactly they are doing okay. because it's not okay. commercially available. Yeah. Okay. So my but this mouth be... rinse is okay. Yeah. And sir, how common uh, is the use of sealants in India? Because uh, she is averring that it is not economical. No, it's it is the most economical actually because okay, uh, okay. one one bottle uh, you can do uh, almost hundred sealants. 100 but the only thing is, okay. it hundred seal hundred teeth can be sealed, uh, and it is uh, really workable. But yes, they should know how to because one spoon when they take. Actually, mm. with one spoon itself, four teeth can be sealed. The amount mm. of wastage is quite a bit there. So that is mm. what if she is meaning. Uh, so mm. uh, you have to be very fast in your application that you switch over to the one quadrant. Now that yeah. earlier it was like, you know, only one molar tooth. Now you can mm. apply to the two premolars as well as molar, three teeth at a stretch. Mm. A recommendation says you can do sealing of all the teeth once it is indicated. It's just not for the molars. And if it is for the first and second molar, he's 12 year old. He has got 13 year old. He has got second molar also in place. So multiple fillings, if you do, it is economical. Otherwise, it's okay. Yes, your answers are always very precious because <laughs> it's having the practical touch, doctor. You are not only a theorist. You know the practical end of it also. Yeah. Then your own, uh, uh, how should I say, fan, Dr. Meenakshi, madam, is asking you to extrapolate on the QLF tool for diagnosis of caries. Yeah. So QLF is, as we know, it is the light, uh, blue light, which is uh, developed, uh, uh, it converts the um, 
in the wave at the wavelength of 400 plus 4 420 uh, 4 or something like that uh, or till 450 uh, it hits on the tooth uh, and on a sound structure any light which hits on a normal structure it reflects back reflects back it's supposed to but even there is in a normal and it has been set for various things like whether it is hitting the plaque or whether it is hitting the tooth structure and the software has been developed by this uh, by algorithm that it will take up the colors accordingly and reflection should take place if the reflection is not happening the light is getting absorbed it's a simple physics there um, if it gets absorbed the back scattering of the light will be lesser so this lesser part would show as a different color it, the light gets absorbed when there is a lesion, when there is a, um, a, a deposit, it gets absorbed. So reflection is less. And after this, the light reflection is less and this gets compared, it compares by itself, again by algorithm, it compares by the rest of the area. The rest of the area means it, a healthy tooth will be there or this is a cavity. So the light got absorbed, less light came. Then parallelly, it doesn't do that. It uh, compares with the normal and shows how much it is less. So we uh... come to... Yeah. So, within so uh, truly, doctor, with, uh, you have made the dentist go digital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it need, today there is a need of evidence and documentation. Why are you charging 2000 rupees for a fluoride application? <laughs> ah, correct, doctor. And doctor, what about the status of ozone treatment to address the concept of high-risk caries? Is there any role? Yeah, but uh, there is a need of a device and all the time delivery yeah. happening. It looks like, and whether the person can have it at home, mm -hmm. that is a professional, right now what I understand is that there's a professional application work is going on and mm -hmm. they are developing some, whether it can uh, release ozone by some uh, activation, self-activation. So uh, like, you know, we put a disposable tablet in the water and the water gets purified. <laughs> if such type of a... Mechanism so, is it still, is, uh, so it is uh, still uh, some way to go because yeah. there are a lot of... You know, uh, oral release in, of ozone by at home care, yes. it still needs to be developed. Yes. And yes. whether it will be safe and all that. Doctor, everybody are appreciating your concept of diet counseling through dentist. Actually, they say the dentist should be the most important person in <laughs> the chain who has to counsel on the diet because food goes straight from the mouth, right? What is your uh, perception or what you have remarks to make on the diet counseling through the dentist for diabetics? Because diabetics are a high uh, risk uh, for oral caries and other things. So that's basically uh, what happens is the diabetics are directly under, strictly under the control of the dietitian Dietitian. Already. But they, they themselves are telling them not to, though we say, uh, we say, you know, you eat sugar, you get your sugar levels high, but it is not just true. It is all, all types of sugars. It is not just raw sugar. First of all, they stop the raw sugars. So uh, coming to the dental breakdown is not because of the, in diabetes, it's a totally a different challenge. The calcium and the phosphate, which is uh, changing there and uh, the sugar is not causing uh, uh, change. Very surprisingly, in some diabetic patients, there's no caries. Oh, it's more more of periodontal problem. Gen gingivitis so, and periodontal. Yeah, so more than caries, they have periodontal problems. So we need to uh, recommend or have a product for that. Right. Why right. there is a breakdown? You know, I have seen like uh, in uh, one of the countries when I visit, there's a tetracycline based toothpaste or you know, calc uh, vitamin D based toothpaste, vitamin uh, other vitamin, such type of products. So many uh, concepts. So, but the diet counseling, yes, we have to give them uh, that uh, particularly the periodontal breakdown should not occur. And karyogenic point of view, it is lesser, I would say. Sir, you have very patiently answered the questions also. One last point you can make on the importance of the salivary and related uh, dental pathology tests, because I think that concept has not picked up. X-rays are there, but other types of pathology tests are not there. You can make one or two remarks on that, sir. It's regarding saliva, no, sir? Yeah, saliva pathology. Yeah, so we are uh, actually doing a lot of tests using saliva here. Recently, we have published uh, saliva as a tool for uh, uh, monitoring. Uh, even uh, uh, conventional microbial plating is a very big uh, 
uh, challenge. Like, you know, we take the sample, we got to go to the microbiology uh, setup, and then we uh, go and record every day or every third day or five days, seven days. Whereas to assay systems, uh, of course, even microbiology also would be having the settings, uh, which are like uh, um, assays which can be done in a period. Yeah. Can be used. Saliva can be used for such type of uh, monitoring. So like, a, uh, to be frank, that we have worked is uh, on uh, sialic acid levels. Sialic okay. acid levels are supposed to be one of the future biomarkers. Fantastic. Future biomarkers, uh, yeah. And uh, we have also worked on uh, because in children, uh, particularly, I mean, all age groups, you know, and uh, uh, we need to monitor. We need something quick test. And uh, we also have point of care tests also, which is under patent right now. So I will be telling uh, sometime once it gets patent through. Um, no problem, no problem. Uh, but yeah, so but sialic acid is a well-known uh, factor. Everybody is doing research across the world as a monitoring method uh, for a patient uh, chair side. Uh, we have also published a paper on that spot test. It's called as a sialidase enzyme. So uh, it will change to... Uh, it is called ninhydrin test, which has been con con uh, converted into uh, on a, a filter paper, uh, which can be seen that it is the um, it reads the amount of sialidase enzyme, and uh, from healthy to periodontitis, and again from periodontitis we're using the saliva acid, and saliva can also be used for doing. Uh, we have done a using saliva, uh, buccal swab, and um, plaque, and seen whether we can study the. Which one is the best me media to know uh, uh, to study the cardiological uh, studies research, and including to go to, going to the level of uh, uh, genomic studies? Thank so, you, sir. Thank you very much. Of, yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you okay. very much. I also take the privilege here to just uh, flash the uh, certificate, sir. The speaker certificate. We are grateful to you for. Uh, this very candid conversation, as well as the discussion that we have had, Thanks. kindly accept Thank the speaker Thank certificate. You. Thank you very much. Congratulations Thank you. Thank you, sir. for all your uh, feathers in the cap. So this certificate <laughs> will come to you, signed by Dr. Manjunata, sir. So I propose Thank the you, vote of thanks and thank you very much, sir. And I thank all the attendees because they have patiently waited and also listened uh, to your uh, presentation. So I think we can uh, uh, take the decision to close the webinar. So sir, sure, we close sir. the webinar? Sure, sir. Yeah. Thank you, thank, thank you, you for the much. opportunity. I thank you yeah. from JSS AHER for uh, 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 depending on us to contribute whatever work we have done in preventive care towards our nation and towards the globe. Thank you. Super. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you.